Welcome to this episode of Fort Worth Forward. I'm Michael Crane and I'm coming to you from Blank Cowork Studios here in Fort Worth, Texas. I'm here with Bridget Mitchell. Tell us a little bit about this studio. Absolutely, glad to have you today. Thank you. We're Blank Cowork and Studio. We're a collaborative workspace and studio based in the heart of Fort Worth. We offer photo and video studios, professional camera equipment, private offices, flexible workspace, and a creative event venue. In fact, we also offer podcast equipment. So if you're looking for a home to film or record your new podcast in, um, come here, this is the place for you. Well, that works perfectly for this episode of Fort Worth Forward, where we have four podcasts that focus on Fort Worth. We have Mayor Maddie Parker in Go Time, Jamie Ice with his stories with soul, Brenton Payne in Fortitude, and EJ Carrion 817. So let's go. Welcome to the show, and now I'm honored to have the mayor of Fort Worth, Texas, Maddie Parker, with me to discuss her podcast and other things about Fort Worth. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Michael, for having me. Appreciate it. Remember the first time we did this? Do you remember this during the campaign? Yes. On my front porch. So That's this right. is a lot more sophisticated. We appreciate. That's right. Um, we had handheld little uh -huh. Facebook, and people were saying we couldn't hear you. Yep. And we, 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 we've really improved since then, haven't we? No. <laughs> You've improved. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just scaling. I'm just uh, muscling along no. through it. Muscling Thank you for having it. me on your show. I appreciate no, it. No, you're welcome. This is really the idea we talked about during the campaign mm -hmm. was communicating with citizens. I don't think that we did it, and you, you as well, didn't think we did it well enough so that our citizens knew what was going on. So yeah. I remember on the campaign having this conversation with you, and I was like, do you know we have this whole studio, and we don't really use it. Uh, down the city and great staff uh, and you said I want to do a podcast yeah and you did it yeah. so talk a little bit about your podcast the idea yeah. you know just about it in general well first of all we have to thank um, Bethany in my office who helped figure it out she'd never done a podcast I hadn't either so we kind of did it together and then um, we didn't know this either but the city of Fort Worth water utility already had a podcast and so we had two awesome staffers that stepped up to say hey we'd be willing to help you produce it so we were able to keep it all in-house at the city of Fort Worth and the purpose really is our exploration, I know you share this too, of how do you communicate to a growing city, mm -hmm. almost a million people. Right. Not everybody consumes their news the same way or what's public interest to them. And so the podcast was my way of trying to, A, connect um, Fort Worth with really interesting people in our city, and also um, making sure we're sharing the important things that are going on at City Hall we wanna share about. So um, that's been the emphasis so, so far, and we've gotten really great feedback. Um, mm -hmm. And I have loved, loved meeting really cool people in Fort Worth that are doing interesting things yeah. to kind of get outside the box and say, hey, Fort Worth is about a multitude of different factors. Here are the people doing um, doing that work in our city. So, Well, yeah, that's you, you've done that. You've focused a lot some, on th some of the things that we're doing, maybe the charter election, yeah. bond elections and those things. But you've also brought in, you know, the, the lacrosse team. Yeah. Uh, you brought in there the coach from there. Yeah. Uh, you recently had a, a, one of the police Luke, department. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Officer Rosinio, and then we had Lou Charles on, who's coming yeah. up. And so the the folks we've interviewed have really provided to me the things we're doing right in the city. Yeah. Um, and then also spurred my interest in maybe their followers are following them. They want to listen to the podcast because you know Lou Charles is awesome and he's this rising um, really hip hop artist in our city. Right. Um, but maybe it gets them a little more intrigued about the importance of what's happening in local government, which you and I talk about a lot, right. getting people right. more focused on those things. So. Well, and, and some of those guests too reach out to different communities that maybe we haven't touched. Absolutely. And, you know, with the recent election, 5% of the population voted, which, yeah. is, which is miserable. Abysmal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so maybe this then gets that out that why it is important to be engaged in local government. Yeah, I think so too. Well, and you know this better than most because you're now in elected office. It's hard to keep people interested in the things that are actually impacting their daily lives right. and do so in a way that you communicate really efficiently. So we're still struggling with that too. It's not just podcasts. And, and if people want to consume their news in a five second Instagram feed, okay, we have to cater to that, right? right? Or right. a tweet that goes out. So. Um, I think it's important for us to continually, you know, try to change things and work with city staff as well on what works, what they're seeing across the city. And then for you to do this show, right? Mm -hmm. Some people really enjoy video content mm -hmm. and that's yep. the only way they want to consume news and they do so through social media. So you've tried to answer that as well. Yeah, I think there's all pockets. We got we have to meet people where they are yeah. and communicate with them. Who, you've named some guests you've had or there's some guests that you'd like to have and, and maybe we create that out of this where yeah. we're coming up. Have you, I want to interview Ross Perot Jr. Okay. Um, I think what he's created in Fort Worth um, as a legacy to his sure. father and, and their continual success at Hillwood mm -hmm. in Alliance, Texas would be really interesting. Um, and then I also want to interview one of our F-35 test pilots. Oh, I've yeah. kind of told Lockheed, you just tell me who and when and what that would look like. Most of their stories are pretty fascinating about sure. how they got to where they are today. Um, I'm actually going inter to interview two neurosurgeons mm -hmm. from THR in the next coming weeks, which oh, yeah. I'm really excited about. Very different pathways right. to becoming doctors at THR. 
um, which is fantastic. And then I do want to interview more kids that are doing in interesting and really amazing things in our city. We started that with Teach for America through a podcast series that we did interviewing students, and I got a lot out of that, and so I want to continue that as well. And I mention it because and you have um, young girls that are mm -hmm. becoming teenagers. Um, uh, yes. I know it's terrible, it's hard, right? <laughs> it but is. they will, if well, you can get them to a place where they're willing to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and share, like their perspective on our world is so helpful to me as a leader because right. um, that's what you're doing this for, right? right? And trying right. to make decisions for them. And so that's kind of the next spot maybe in the next school year, I'll well, interview some kids. Well, if you can get my teenagers to be vulnerable. I bet I can. If I say uh, you get to t tell all the dirt on Michael, <laughs> on your dad, they're going to sign it up for sure. And there's a, there's a lot of it out there <laughs> yeah. for sure. All we should but, do is have Ainsley and Laney on. Oh right? my gosh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, our, they, our two six-year-olds, which are not <laughs> yeah, not well behaved. <laughs> and have no filter. No, of, yes, unfortunately, that's true. Well, yeah. thanks for being here. Yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate the job you're doing. Yeah, you too. I know how hard it is and what and you give up. To, and sacrifice to yeah. do it every day. And yes, so, same to you. Um, thanks, appreciate it, appreciate yeah. it. Okay, Great. thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. Bye, Crane. Bye. Hey, I'm here now with Jamie Ice with Sixth Avenue Storytelling, but really with his Stories with Soul podcasts. Jamie, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Glad, glad to be here. Glad you're here. Um, always full of energy, always exciting. I'm, I'm happy to Lord. call you a friend and, and, and have you here today. I know, we've been friends, we've been friends for a while. We have, we friends, have. We've done, we have. We've done some, some Real estate deals together, yeah, and, and yep. just and I am I'm a I'm a Michael Crane fan. I love what you're doing. Oh my gosh, doing uh, in the city, y'all are doing great work. Thank you, thanks, I appreciate it. Well, let's talk about your stories with Soul. You and your partner uh, put this together, and tell us a little bit about it and, and what your hope is bringing this to to the people. So, so one, I love podcasts. Mm. I'm kind of a pod, podcast junkie. Have been been kind of intrigued with it for a while. I've, I've always wanted to do one. For really, the past couple years has been on my like my bucket list of things to do. And, and when, we, when we launched Six Avenue Storytelling, which is the marketing company we launched a couple years ago, the, the whole point was how, how do we help small businesses? How do we foster entrepreneurship and make sort of the marketing piece easier? And, and as, as we've gotten to do that, it just, just had lots of fun conversations with entrepreneurs and founders and people who started small businesses, and w which really sort of birthed the idea of, of doing the Stories with Soul podcast. And so the, the, the hope here is it is as, as I think like the, there's there's two real ways you learn and grow as a as a business leader as mm -hmm. an entrepreneur as, as as someone who's trying to make an impact in the community and I think that the, the first is, is through trial and error which right is how, right you, sometimes you have to fail to sometimes you got to fail up, right and great okay. great lesson and it's just trying things right. and, and you learn you learn the hard way and the the other way is, is by being in proximity with people who have gone before you right and, sort and of I, mentors to help and just sort of men, show the mentors way. Yeah. And, and so I, I have I've been spared a lot of heartache by being in proximity to people who have given me yeah. advice and I've also if I had been <laughs> had, had 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 you know more mentors I, I think it would have saved me time and energy so so the thought behind this was was how do I take people in Fort Worth who have who have built incredible brands someone mm -hmm. who, who who has built something successful a brand that we all know and love and give people proximity to that person and so the the there's two kind of point, points of it is, is one is to highlight folks who have just done really neat things and build great brands and like shine light on their story because there's sure. people doing killer stuff in our city the other part, part is like giving people proximity to that person to, to hear from their wins and their lessons and their secrets and their tips and just to you know not everybody gets to sit down and have a conversation with, with some of you know some so folks. you kind of facilitate that you're so having I mean, a conversation with them so other people can learn from their lessons exactly and there's some like some people that I like would love to sit down and have a conversation yeah. with and now it's like hey man I got a podcast <laughs> so it's, it's an excuse to call selfish, them up and have them come yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a selfish piece of it too but it, but it's been cool. like man just it's people doing killer stuff in our community. Yeah, give us and some it, examples. Who get like just um, sort of surprised you or you knew but wanted to tell their story. Yeah, so so we so on, on season we just wrapped season one and, and we had um, we had Lou Lambert who yeah. I'd actually never had a conversation with before but I have been like a fan of for forever. Yeah, who's who's doing Paris Coffee Shop and who has Dutches and has been a part of these cool hotels. So got to hear his story. Uh, John Bonnell, kind of hearing his story and all he went through through COVID. Uh, we had Carrie Crow with with Melt. Uh, we had Betsy Price on, yeah. and what, Betsy was an interesting podcast yeah. because I knew her. She was my brother's best friend's. Mom. Yeah, I listened to you. All, she used to drive y'all around and She's drive, beach trips and other things. So right? I knew her as like as Philip's mom. Right. And I was like, but how did she? Then I knew her as like the mayor. Right. But like, what's? How did that happen? Right. And so, man, that that, that was fun. Uh, got sat down with Abraham Alexander and Josh Weathers, a couple great Fort Worth musicians, and. 
And Mark Istook, I listened to Mark. Mark Istook, who's Mark a news a anchor. Great, yeah, right, yeah. yeah, just sort of how he got into the biz and got came back to Fort Worth. So, it, man, it, it, it was a ton of fun. Well, I think one of the, one of the most interesting was um, we sat down with with Katie McFarland, who's an influencer blogger. Probably the probably the biggest, most successful influencer in in Fort Worth, which mm -hmm. is a crazy thing. And I know there's like there's like three hundred thousand people that follow her on Instagram. Wow, that's wow. like a third of our population. <laughs> third of our right? population. Yeah. So, like, how did you build that? So, it, man, it was. It's been a lot of fun, and the yeah. feedback's been really neat. We're, we're gearing up for season two. We're gonna probably start recording that this summer. Um, Great, any any uh, tidbits of people that you wanna have on in season two? I, I have a bucket list in my head, okay. but I haven't like asked people yet, so I don't wanna, unless maybe if I said it here, then they're like morally obligated. To, <laughs> you to can create your own future by saying. Yeah, there's a few, there's a few yeah. So I have a list of probably like 10 or 15 people that I'd like to have on the next season. Uh, but I ha haven't asked him yet. So okay. Okay. I don't, I don't Any theme look. for the next next year or I think, sort of that? You know, part I, I, the, the the main thing is like, have they built a brand? And that that, that might mean you know a brand as a as a company, or it mm -hmm. might mean a brand as a politician, or it might mean a brand mean a brand as as an artist. Yeah. Uh, but they've built some sort of brand that people know and love and follow, and 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 I, and I try to rotate. Like last, we had some chefs, we had some some business folks, we had kind of people in different industries and I, and I like bouncing around between those and mm -hmm. so but it's all Fort Worth yeah it's, it's all it's all like Fort Worth well you know I love Fort Worth and promoting Fort Worth I, that's, that's <laughs> why we're here that's why we're doing this we're kind of doing the same that drill down on soul when soul. you said call it stories with soul what was the idea behind like putting soul in that in so the title? so why, we use that phrase a lot at Sixth Avenue okay we, we call when we started Sixth Avenue homes we like we wanted to do real estate with soul mm -hmm. uh, when, when, we, when we started Sixth Avenue storytelling which is a marketing company we want to do marketing with soul and so when, when I use that phrase which is kind of a cheesy cheesy fluffy phrase uh, but, but but for me soul soul means two things so the, the the first is when something has soul it has a purpose mm -hmm. there's a mission it's like bigger than you there's a there's a redemptive nature to it so if, if, yeah. when, when you put soul in something it's like I care there's a right. heart behind it it's big it's bigger than just money or the things so there's, there's that element and the second second piece is when something has soul it makes you feel something like this building we're in is, is pretty cool it's cool like, huh you, yeah, you yeah feel a vibe like right. when you when you hear Leon Bridges sing, yeah. you get goosebumps because right. he has soul. That's right. And so, so when we talk about putting soul into real estate, it's like, can we have a purpose? Can we have a mission? And can we create spaces that have soul? We talk about putting soul into marketing. Can we make it just beyond just trying to sell things? And, and for stories with soul is the, the people we're interviewing, just every single one of them has a mission, has a purpose, has a, has a bit, there's a why and a heart behind why they took this giant leap of faith and did all this hard work. And then also they've built really cool th things yeah. that make you, you know, when you go and melt ice creams and, you know, see the yellow, yeah. when you get the, like, you feel something. You feel something. You feel yeah. something. And yeah. so that's, that's, that's what we mean by. That's cool. cool. That's a cool, cool thought. You mentioned a couple of times supporting and, and really helping small businesses flourish. And part of what you've done with Sixth Avenue Story Sixth Avenue Storytelling is trying to do that model. Um, yeah, uh, you want to talk a little bit about that and, and yeah. how that all fits together. I, I think like I've had a kind of a wild, wild, weird path, yeah. <laughs> and I guess like I've watched it and loved it the whole time. <laughs> I, I know you've seen. It. You're like, what do you do? And I'm like, I don't know. I do a. I've, I, I would now I would say I'm like I'm an entrepreneur. Like sure. I, I I'm I like starting things. I'm. I'm not great at finishing things, but I like starting. <laughs> but but I have become just over the years increasingly passionate about just entrepreneurship right. and help and and specifically small business because I think I think small business is what makes a city special. Like right. when you go to Portland, you want to go see the Portland coffee shops and the Port like right. you know when you go to New York, you don't want to go to Olive Garden or Sbarro. You want so I'm passionate about small business and and, and, and all that being said, through the different ventures I've, I've been a part of, I've. I think the theme is like is I've done music, I've done restaurants, I've done real estate, and I'm I don't know that I'm great at any of those, but I'm but I love the business side mm -hmm, of it, mm -hmm. and so part of part of starting Six Avenue Storytelling was was could I take all the things that I've learned in marketing and how I've grown these brands and grown these businesses and give people a playbook that would make make it easier mm -hmm. uh, because I, th I think that's kind of my superpower is, is like how do I get people excited about a yeah. brand uh, and so a lot of it is just here's all my trial and error and let me spare you like my 15 years of heartache right and, and if I can give businesses here's a, here's a blueprint for how you do marketing right and I also think like mar like the best marketing is storytelling sure when you when you when you lead with a story versus saying come buy this thing come buy this thing right which is like advertising is kind of what I think of right um, and so that you're not that, really connecting with people when you do that yeah. and that's the idea 
ideas connect in yeah. some way. So that was the heart of six time of storytelling was, was could, we, could we specifically help small businesses market and grow their brands easier using the power of story? It's great. Well, I have a focus and a love for small businesses too, and we're starting. This I know that's that's what we've, we've <laughs> hit it off over that over the years. <laughs> we're starting this from the government perspective, the Small Business Task Force, which I'll talk about on another uh, episode. But really, it's about um, how do we make it easier from a government perspective for small businesses to thrive. We tend to put a one size fits all on small businesses. Um, and act like they're a big corporation, but they're not. And yeah. we want it to be easier for people like you and other people to sort of yeah. uh, operate and, and, and be entrepreneurial and, and thrive. So yeah. I'm excited for that. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've heard y'all talk about it. Yeah. I've, I'm, I, just, I think it's neat that you're putting resources and time into that. Well, it's important. When you look at it, small businesses really do make a, a city thrive. And it's what makes yeah. it interesting. Right. Like it, right. it literally gives it soul. Is, it's what gives, gives it soul. It soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again for being on here. Really appreciate you, Jamie. Uh, you, uh, appreciate all that you're doing for the city. And, and, uh, and I think you've got a concert coming up, Green River Ordinance, right? We, it's yeah. sold out in the first few hours. Of, yes. Told, we, so. we ha yeah. We haven't, we haven't played like a, a public ticketed show in like four, four years. Right. And uh, we kind of put, we put, put the band on hold a few years back, um, but we're doing a reunion concert. There you go. And we there announced it. Uh, last week, and it sold out in like 12 hours. Wow. Which is, and wow. it's at the new Tannehill's Tavern. It's okay. Tim, Tim Love's new, new music venue in... in uh, is that down in the Stockyards? Mule, Mule Alley, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is another... It's a small business. Mm -hmm. It's a cool... It's, it's a very local thing, and so we're playing, doing that in October. It's going to be fun. Cool. Yeah. Well, I hope to make it out. Yeah. Good to see you. Yeah. See thanks it. for being here. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having Thank me. You. Thank you. And now my next guest is Brenton Payne, who has a podcast, Fortitude, on Roxo Media House. Welcome. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm holding up, you know, oh. getting through the spring busyness. Yes. Kids yeah. out of school. I don't know what it is. It's like fall and spring. They just pedal to the metal on the, you know, the schedule. You got to schedule them up for the summer. Cause it, oh know, yeah. 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 For sure. For it never sure. ends. We live busy <laughs> lives. Yeah. Thanks for having me. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for, for being here and, and talk a little bit about Fortitude. Tell us about it. How sure. did it come about? What, were, what was the idea behind it? So um, JW and I, Wilson, and yeah, sorry he yeah. couldn't be here today, um, we had talked a lot about just all different kinds of things and, and we had done some stuff before. Um, and then, you know, during COVID, we had been talking more and more. And then, the you know, right out of COVID was the mayoral race mm -hmm. and a lot of city council races. And I thought, geez, you know, there's got to be a better way for these candidates to just kind of show who they are without putting them together. I remember going to a mayoral, uh, it was when Betsy was running against Deborah, and, and, and I had seen it a lot in the state legislature and stuff. You get these folks on stage and they're not really themselves. You know, there's a lot going on, there's an audience, there's your, your other, you know, campaign opponent there. And I thought, how can we do this where, so that's really kind of where it started yeah. and then, through JW's connections and some of my own, we were able to just kind of fill it out with a, just a lot more and it kind of meandered. Um, and, and, you know, as you smile. As things do. Just, as yes, things, yes, things yes. just meander. You say, Britain paid me in, <laughs> what? You know, so, um, yeah, but it's just, it's been really nice. And, yeah. and like we've approached it in very different manners, which causes its own little strife at times. But for the most part, it works really well. Like his structure is not mine and the way he likes to plan. Make, we all make fun of each other. Which for is sure, fun. all yes, the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were just laughing beforehand, and what, as we were, you were really laughing, and I was yeah. really laughing. <laughs> I mean, the humor thing—you gotta, you have sure. to go with it in this day and age. There's just too much going on. You have to be able to laugh, in my opinion. It's just really important. It so. is, and have have a good partnership there. Yeah. Well, Mayor and I had talked about this that on the campaign trail, we talked about communicating with people that we didn't think that the city did it in mm -hmm. in, a, in a good enough fashion, and that's where the idea came up with the show. And she was talking about her podcast as part of this way before we were even elected and that's what's been fun about this format but what's your overall goal with fortitude yeah so um you know initially uh it was it was just to kind of stay involved in the political stuff in a kind of a different way there had to be a way to to kind of report it and then i slowly realized that like I live two lives, you know, this really bipolar. It's like there's like the podcast stuff and all of that. And then there's this governmental affairs consulting, which is kind of the dark, quiet arts, you know, like <laughs> that kind of thing. But I'm, I'm trying to, you know, eventually get to be able to merge them together. Because what I've noticed is a lot of the folks that we have as guests or the people who I uh, interface with there and around the studio that we've built, it, they're 
they're not really in the governmental space. Right. You talk about a bond election, they're like, but that's not exciting. And so it's like- Yeah, you had David Cook on there talking about a bond yeah, election. Yeah, and, and, and initially when we, JW and I were talking about it, he's like, is that gonna get any play? Right. You know, and it's like, it has to. We're at a place with, you look at our voting numbers and what that election was and some of these other elections, it's like somehow we have to, if it's make it entertaining some way, get people more engaged in, in kind of their local government and that, you know, so I'm working on ways to try to do that. You but know, you, I, I would say you're already doing that a little bit because you've had Jack White on there mm -hmm. talking about human trafficking and what mm -hmm. they're seeing there. Yep. You've had uh, Rob Simple, Westside Little League, bringing your kids back into it sure. as part of it. So you're melding some of these community aspects into it. Yeah, right? and I have mainly infrastructure clients. And so my next goal is to, and it doesn't have to be where I'm the star of every show, right? right. I mean, I just, I, I want to get on, good. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get I want to get folks who are really knowledgeable. So I'm working on kind of an infrastructure one because if you look at just even something like a LinkedIn site, mm -hmm. people are are combing that for information. You know, whether it be in and around real estate that's based around infrastructure, in and around just kind of where the next big projects are going to go. And then if you look at the coffers that this not only the state but locally and the feds have put down. There's a tremendous amount of money that is that is there for the taking if we can do it correctly, and thankfully we were able to pass those mm -hmm. those bond elections. But I mean, you guys are seeing the flow of that, and, and we need to make sure that Fort Worth in this area, it, you know, is due up and gets gets what's there. So, so that's kind of like the next. For me, now other people that I work with, they want to do all sports all the time, you know. <laughs> you do focus on that with JW. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. mean, to me, that's just, you know, I don't like, I mean, I've never been into that. My wife gets mad. She's like, you shouldn't ask questions about players like that, Brent. These are, these are <laughs> things that every person should know, so. No, I think it's important you kind of bring up different uh, avenues that you're working in or subject matter. And it is, uh, Fort Worth is very diverse. And so some people might want sports out of it a little bit, which sure. I'll banter back. But then some people might want some real uh, in-depth knowledge about policy or whatever, everything else is going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, like, it, we're getting on this 20-year mark when I was called by a friend who ran a guy named Kim Brimer's mm -hmm. uh, yeah. primary campaign. He said, I had gone through the tech bus that just happened 20 years ago. He said, why don't you run his general election? And they started talking about county commissioners. And I had no idea who any of these people were. And I think that a lot of people are like that. They're moving through life, doing their things, and they really don't even pay attention to government that much and kind of the role of government and where uh, those folks are. And so it's kind of ironic that we're getting that. And so that it's just like, yeah, I think that, I think we could could stand to get some more people involved in, in not like an education way, right. you know, but, but just to know, you know your world is, right. is like that very much, but there's probably still people you go to on Friday Night Cocktail Hour who, they don't want to talk any of that because right. they really, they I don't, don't know a Friday lot about Cocktail, it. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. But it seeps in. So I've asked everybody this, and, 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 and maybe it'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy, but who, is there a guest you haven't had yet that you'd like to have on the show? Uh, so, um, so Maddie alluded to it. So I play, um, pedal steel guitar yeah and uh it's like this foreign instrument right yeah. and then the guys when i first started playing they're all older they're they're, they're like, now they're 70s and stuff and they're hey you got any other when i was a little bit younger that was like 20 years ago too and uh when i started and they said you got any young guys like you because we're worried we're going to lose this instrument so there are there's so much pedal steel history in this state and they've done a Western swing documentary, but they don't really focus. So the one guy that I keep pushing for is my pedal steel teacher. Yeah. He's got a shop over in White Settlement. Okay. And he is like the luthier of all luthiers and knows how to fix those things and sells them. And it's just a, it's, it, it would be great. And I want to go to his shop because there's stuff everywhere, you know, okay. hanging on stuff. Yeah, so awesome. that'd be one of mine. Okay. You know? That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, good luck getting that. You can Thank show you. them this later and say, see, I want you on the, <laughs> yeah. on the show. Sure. sure, sure. Uh, we well, appreciate you being here. Yeah, Thanks thank again. You. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Good to see you. I appreciate it. And now we're here with EJ Carrion that does the 817 podcast. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Welcome. I um, have listened to your podcast a lot. I love it. Um, tell us, our viewers, a little bit about the idea behind it, how yeah. it came about, and you and your partner, uh, Jimmy. Yep. Yep. How it came together. Yeah, so Jimmy couldn't be here. Uh, really what happened is we both live in the east side um, of Fort Worth, mm -hmm. and we're both really news junkies. I was a journalism major in school, and uh, during the pandemic, you know, but my work is very national. I'm very not home often. And so being stuck at home, it was a chance and opportunity to get local. And so we were doing 
we were ranting about Fort Worth already as friends. So I was like, man, how do we do a podcast about this? And then as well as, you know, I also invested in t doing leadership Fort Worth class and just kind of getting more involved locally mm -hmm. because I didn't have that time before the pandemic. Right, right. Who's your audience with the podcast? What are you trying, yeah, what, are, yeah. what are you aiming to, to I would say, um, yeah, just Fort Worth, Tarrant County. Um, we, we record every Monday, and the idea is to do a 45-minute show where we spend 10 hours a week, you know, reading through local news, trying to find what's the important stories, the, the important data, and then we bring them to our listeners. So this idea is if you don't have 10 hours to listen to all the news, <laughs> we'll do it in 45 minutes, and then we'll do it in an audio in a fun way for you so you can get that insight. So that's kind of the breakdown. Right, right. And I'll say that some of our other guests have been you know, a little more – you yeah, know, positive yeah. about things yeah. that are happening in Fort Worth. Your show's yeah. a little more skeptical about things yeah, yeah, that are happening yeah, in Fort yeah. Worth. How, yeah. how do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's what really has made for our pod resonate with a, a core of people is that, you know, Fort Worth has this uh, friendly vibe about it. Everything's always so happy and go lucky. Mm -hmm. And so we are able to say, be more transparent uh, and just be more, hey, you know, life isn't that easy. We're, we're not a um, perfect place and so I think that authenticity is big, and I think that's why our listeners really like it. On top of, like, we're not affiliated with anyone. You know, we're not right. affiliated with the city. We're not affiliated with Visit Fort Worth. We're not affiliated with anyone. So we can really, we have no agenda. You know, I have the same amount of friends I've had before the podcast. So it's this idea of, you know, just being real. And yeah. I think that's what catches people. And so Maddie Parker, you know, one of her great dad is the average Fort Worthian is 34 and a person mm -hmm. of color. And I'm like, so you're looking at the listener, you know, like I feel like that was a big key for us. It's like mm -hmm. to actually represent a part of Fort Worth where instead where most of Fort Worth is still represented by the average voter, which is right. 66. Right. So right. I think that's the, the, the kicker of where our pod is wanting to get more young people excited mm -hmm. about uh, the future of Fort Worth and voting right. uh, and just seeing that their actions matter. No, I, I love that too. And people often say, well, you don't want people to vote. It's funny, I do want people yeah. to vote. Because I get tired of people saying, well, you're only elected by this amount. Yeah. Well, that's who showed up to vote. So yeah. that's who had a voice. Yeah. So I actually encourage people to get educated, yeah. to show up to vote. You know, yeah. our, our late, latest bond election, 5% yep. of the population voted. Yeah. But it will be a trigger for multiple generations yep. because there's $560 million that is going yeah. into this. That will be yeah. infrastructure, you know, police, fire, yeah. um, libraries, yeah. and all these that, that again, 5%. You're away. like three, you're like 3% away from a pay raise. <laughs> It's true. It didn't fail as miserably yeah, as I thought. I it was would. very impressed. Uh, I agree. We we were pro, we were pro giving the city council a livable wage. So yeah, we were there yeah, for yeah. that. Yeah, I, so I, we act. You know, we were we were excited for stuff like that. And you know, I think our pod. We've had Maddie. We've had people on. Um, and our, and our whole thing is, I I hope everyone sees our our um, toughness as, you know, if if I want to know BS opinion and perspective where someone's going to be straight with me, right? The eight one seven podcast will do that. Yeah, well, it's good. So you bring up the mayor during the campaign. She and I had talked yeah. a little bit about we don't think the city communicates yeah. very well at all and that people get their news in different ways. Yeah. Um, and part of that is getting, you know, reliable news uh, and, and having that. So you, what was your, your sort of thought about a podcast? Why do a podcast since we're featuring all podcasts on this episode? Yeah, I think... Um like like someone said earlier, podcast is like a way to be productive where you can like fold clothes and listen to audio. You can mow the lawn and listen to audio. Yeah. You can, it's just a way to be efficient and get that insights where reading is just not the fondest for a lot of people to sit down and actually read the newspaper. Right. Um, and so the podcast just made sense. Uh, and I feel like the market that we're trying to hit is a, a more youthful market, even though um, they may not be in the podcast just yet, but yeah. I think we're we're trying to be, you know, that Monday morning podcast show for doers in Fort Worth who wants to get some insights and perspectives on people who are actually doing some stuff. You know, I run my own company, mm -hmm. you know, that's Jimmy runs a, an indie, indie movie theater. We're not just two people with no lives. You know, right. these are people who are, I like to say, are smart, are ambitious, are hustling right, uh, right next to you. And um, so I think that's where we have a good fandom of, you know, listeners. Other hustlers that are yeah, out there yeah, trying yeah. to just yeah, get, yeah, get yeah. things done. Well, who's been your favorite guest? so far or yeah. yeah um i would say robert robert stearns was yeah, a great one for there. me yeah 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 because yeah. i mean um he was really good just because it was actually it's mostly the two of make, you but you yeah, have yeah, had some guests yeah, yeah 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 as part of this yeah yeah so. so yeah um we've been doing a lot more just us two lately yeah um, just because you if, if you know getting this set up interviews right. are just tough to get and for us we both got full-time jobs and so right. we're just like sundays show up and then 
it comes out Monday. And right. And so I always tell, you know, Fort Worth's lucky I got a real job because I would spend <laughs> more time on it and actually do more for the city. But, uh, but uh, yeah. yeah. You so had Harrison okay. on there, Mantis from Start to Yeah, Harrison's Monday. great. That was a great episode yeah, 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 just yeah. talking about Harrison's it. Harrison's great. Because he does, his full-time job is to yeah. sit and watch the city government. So. Yeah, yeah. And he and he's always, you know, send, you know giving us um, requests and updates and ideas. He's a big fan of the pod. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tons of, Chris from Fort Worth Report was great that, talking yeah. about journalism. Um, so yeah, a lot of good people uh, on the pod, and it's just cool to see who listens. You know, we say something and someone texts us. You know, right. like, oh yeah, this is right, this is wrong. Yeah. Um, so it's just cool to see who listens. Yeah, yeah. Well, I listen, and you sort of bring up Chris and other publications yeah. too. But that's, I guess, the the Post Washington Post theme is democracy dies yeah. in darkness. Yeah. And so. Um, Appreciate that. So you mentioned you have you actually have a full time job. Yeah, yeah. It's called Student Success Agency. Agency. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that and yeah. and how you help students succeed. Yeah, yeah. So um, for about ten years, we started a digital platform that allows kids to receive advising, tutoring, counseling anywhere, anytime from their cell phones. Mm -hmm. So we're really helping schools reimagine student support services in a digital world. Yeah. Before Student Success Agency, kids could only get support services during the day when kids were in class. Okay. That would be like the grocery store only open when you're at work. Right. Like I know I need these resources, I know these services, but why are they only available when I'm in school? And so we've helped over 550 schools create digital student support services across 20 states. Okay. Um, servicing 50,000 students across the country uh, with digital support. So that's I've been doing for 10 years, um, and, I, and I am the only resident of Fort Worth. Everyone else lives across the country of our staff and team. Did you see COVID? You were able to sort of expand the business yes, because yes. you did it digitally. And it yes, yeah. yes. You know, people who saw what we were doing as a, a nice to have, it now has became, you know, a need. Need. Yeah, um, uh, for the world. So it's it's been exciting because we've been doing this since Skype was cool. Right. So I like to say we've been doing this for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but now to see, you know. You might have and, to explain to me what Skype yeah, was. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, you know, and just what a Cameron Cushman, he was another great right. uh, uh, interview. You know, what the entrepreneurial scene that's come in. Um, the Bitcoin stuff, all this stuff is really fun. And I think, you know, again, you have two entrepreneurs reading the news. Um, you know, we're, we, we are more progressive. And so it's just a cool, younger take of Fort Worth. Yeah, you brought up Bitcoin because I listened yeah. to the episode yeah, where yeah, yeah, yeah. it was kind of like, what the heck is happening? But yeah, I think yeah. overall, in the end, you were favorable with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's funny, we, uh, we, <laughs> we've gotten a lot of criticism, oh, uh, yeah. but I've had to explain it's three computers in the yeah. basement of City Hall. And really, yeah. it was a... Uh, the mayor was at some event and she got asked about it. She goes, yeah, yeah. it was a PR stunt. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, great, I yelled from the audience and it worked. Yeah, the best $2,000 you spent. That's you know, right. Like, you got Bloomberg. You got, you got every single oh, major. Yeah, yeah. I think we, I forget how many impressions they sent us a list of yeah. that Fort Worth was on the map. And yeah, and I got friends. I got friends texting me like, oh, look, you always talk about how Fort Worth ain't doing anything. Look at this. <laughs> you know, so I was like, yeah, we're, we're making it happen. So, so uh, yeah, so it's been fun. And, and Fort Worth kudos. We also had that. Uh, we had this like Kendrick Lamar thing mm -hmm. that just happened with yeah. the hip hop. Yeah. I think it's up the art gala trying to buy the painting from the Louvre. Right. So we've right. kind of been, you know, CNN with Goldie's barbecue. Right. Like we're doing some natural stuff. And yeah. yeah. That's exciting as the 13th biggest city. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're we say 12th, move. but yeah, yeah, but 12th. I think, but I think we're, yeah, we're yeah, sort of moving yeah, ourselves up. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, we're yeah. like 12 and a half or something. Yeah. 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 But we'll be there. Yeah, we'll yeah. be there. Well, thanks for your time, EJ. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for what you do. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Fort Worth Forward. It was great to be out here at Blank Coworking Studio, and I hope you learned a little bit more about Fort Worth through the podcast that we featured today. Thank you again. If you have suggestions of people that you would like to see appear here to tell their Fort Worth story, email us at district3 at Fort Worth, Texas. Again, thank you.